I'm Alicia Sweeney. You are listening to Indie 1023, joined in our studio today by UK rock band Idols. They're back in the U.S. touring in support of their fourth album, Crawler. First of all, welcome back to the States and welcome back to Colorado. Thank you, Alicia. I noticed on your Instagram stories yesterday that you were rolling around in some snow. Did that go online? Mm-hmm. Okay. What was it like being in the snow after, you know, hanging out for a couple of days in the desert at Coachella? Um, it, was, it was a request of mine. I asked our, our new driver, Bud, if he could stop when we get to some snow so I'd get out. Something I've always wanted to do. And was it fulfilling? It was refreshing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Felt good. Good. Real good. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Well, I'm feeling really good today because you're joining us in the studio to play us some songs. So what are you going to do for us first? I don't know, Bo. What are we going to do first? Uh, uh, MTT420RR. Well, how does that go? MTT. Do I see? Is that the lyrics? I always um, wondered whether it was for, for Twitter. Or... Well, it can be if you want. It's, anything. Right, so. it's art, isn't it? You interpret it how you want, Bowen. Mm-hmm. Don't be restrained by society and its perspective. Okay, you be you. Thanks, Joe. I have sworn tonight 
That's the album opener from Idol's new record, Crawler. This is Indie 1023. This song's pretty... I like the way you weren't brave enough to say it after the... (laughs) How are you going to say it, Alicia? Alicia, come on. Um, How are we going to do it? MTT 420RR. That was very well pronounced. I like like that way. That was was a good one. Yeah, if you you need somebody on the road to to help, uh, you know, get get on stage and narrate that for you, I'm happy to do that. Stop trying to get on the bandwagon. Come on. (laughs) This is a, a, the, the song that kicks off the album, a very deeply personal record of yours, especially uh, uh, you, Joe, as this is a, a song that you've written about, uh, you know, your addiction and recovery mm-hmm. as well. Can you tell us more about the track? And um, It's a track that uh, Bowen and I uh, wrote together. Um, I wanted to start, the, I was obsessed with the idea of starting with an LFO. I think that was my only input for the instrumentation at the Mm. start. Um, And then Bowen kind of went away with it and did his thing, as he often does. And it's the first track I've ever written lyrics for and then sent them to you to be like, what do you think? I'm thinking about a narrative as an allegory for what the album was about, which is about recovery. And... um, yeah, it was a really beautiful thing. It was definitely the best song we've done, I think, in my opinion. Um, I know a lot of people may disagree with us, but they're not in the band, yeah. so shut up. Um, but this was like, this is a really good time for us. I think we learned a lot from each other um, in terms of writing, and it's definitely for us our most accomplished song, so I love it. Yeah, because you guys are a five-piece band, but is it is it Joe, you and you and Bowen that kind of start with the foundations of the track for most things? Yeah, the last two albums, yeah. 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 And for you, Bowen, what was it like when and when Joe came to you with this song in particular, and your he said he sent you the lyrics for this? You probably he's a friend of yours. You've seen him struggling. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, we I think I think we knew even before the lyrics to the song that that this kind of like reflection mm. on Joe, self-reflection from Joe was going to be the the goal of the album and like the, the story of the album. Um, and then what I find was how very Joe it was, the lyrics, especially on this song, because it goes from this very harrowing description of someone after a motorcycle accident, but then there's like a little bit of humour in there that's, like very gallows humor and but surrealist and uh, very, Joe, so it's just very it t- very typified Joe in a very short space of time, um, and then it made me think a lot more about 
what the song could then become and how we would approach the production and you know be in this thing where you kind of lose a sense of it and lose control and it spirals in certain directions then centers back um and that kind of that felt like the narrative that joe was portraying and i yeah, wanted the music to reflect it it was like a vice versa because mm. you were creating landscapes for my lyrics on some of the songs and some of the songs i wrote the music for and then he'd complete it and then it would still give me a landscape that would change like half the songs i wrote in the vocal booth at, at the studio and half I wrote before. So like, it just gave us a lot of time to kind of push each other in new directions, which is great. Yeah, and this was an album that you guys recorded during the pandemic. Yeah. And then, had you begun writing the songs pre-2020? No. Um, yeah, I was wondering about that. And also, I don't know your timeline as far as like getting sober or recovery or mm -hmm. anything. Um, I'm guessing this was hugely cathartic for you. And uh, yeah, in a, in a different way. Nothing to do okay. with addiction or recovery. Mm. I'd recovered in a way. I'm still recovering. You're yeah. always recovering, really, yeah. especially if you're around good people and you've got an amazing job. This is but different. This was like, it's a musical catharsis. I've been sober for about two years. Mm. Um, and... This was something else. This was us progressing as musicians. Like, really, the journey that we had as a band was about <clears throat> a renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, Ultra Mono was us butchering the caricature of what idols had become. We built with our audience gladly, and we wanted to murder it so we could start again and, and push our audience in a new direction. Byron was keen to do that. I was keen to do that. And um, <clears throat> it gave us a new lease of life. And, um, you know, I wasn't struggling with anything else. Um, I had a lot of trouble during the ultra mono time and I came out of it and I was just ready. And we all were. And we were very interested in each other and what we had to offer. And I think what came out of it was the first chapter in something more brilliant that we're capable of and creating a, a, a more fruitful relationship with our audience yeah. who are loyal um but in a way that's is <clears throat> fueled by open-mindedness you know we're all you can see there's a sense of wanting to be challenged it's not you know the by numbers generic music that even in the stuff that we love you know like we talk about post-punk noise rock and but we want to challenge those fans we don't just want to challenge the new fans that only listened to like commercial radio before and then suddenly they're into a bit of rock and roll. We want to challenge all our fans and we want to be, you know, on the edge of something familiar and something volatile. Um, and that can, that violence can be a beautiful thing and it's, it's full of love. It's not, you know, we're not here to, uh, piss anyone off we're here to create a community and something much bigger than ourselves yeah. and we're there you know and it's a beautiful thing i love that that there's a violence in your sound in both a, a beautiful and a visceral you know carnal way yeah you know all the best art is violent you know or you, you just go through the history of it you know in a brush stroke in a in a palette in a tone of voice in the sound of drums in anything you know is seeing the whites of the eyes of the of the t the, the the teller yeah and seeing the pain or the joy to be to bring brilliance to anything gives people a sense of existence beyond the everyday and that brilliance is what keeps people um not young but keeps people vibrant mm. and interested i think the only way to be interesting to be interested, um, and that goes two ways. Art isn't a one-way thing. It's not about the artist. It's about the relationship that you build with your language, with your audience, whether you see them or not. Mm -hmm. You're going to play us another song next. This one has a little bit of pain and joy in it, I think. I think they all do, especially yeah. when I'm singing. This one's Meds. It's Idols in the CPR Performance Studio here on Indie 1023. Thank you. Jesus 
loves a try Call off the town cry Climb that razor wire Then medicate, meditate, medicate Hide your crescent bruise Shine your nation's shoes Tie your owner's noose and medicate Meditate, medicate Class kill got me here Smash pills, fear no fear I came in from the rear to medicate Meditate, medicate Drugs lost what I had found Burn friendships to the ground Turn my frown upside down Then medicate, meditate, medicate Adorn a house within Lather baby skin Alleviate your kin Now that's what I call Medication! Medication! From Idols, this is Indie 1023, Alicia hanging out with the band. Crawler was recorded at Peter Gabriel's studio in Bath. Yes. How was that experience like? How did you choose that studio? I think it's 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 ruined us for any other studio that we go to. Really? Yeah, it's the yeah. it's like it's the best studio in the world, I, I think. That's, One of. Yeah, it's, it's very well regarded. Um, and you can tell why as soon as you go there. There's a real feeling to the place real sense so like as you go come in there's this massive old victorian mill mm -hmm. and then behind it is this like super modern james bond bad guy kind of layer building at the back yeah um and it was it was a real experience for us because it was in the middle of lockdown you were allowed to work so you, everyone everyone else was at home but if you were working you were allowed to leave your house so we all kind of got tested and then we became this little bubble in the middle of like the countryside near Bath. Um, 
and it, it's just a, it's an amazing place. It's got you, you know some some studios you you get told about the heritage, and it can be an elephant in the room in in a, in a really good way, but sometimes it can be an elephant room in a bad way. But it definitely, I think, it feeds a lot of the energy um, there, and they've just got the unbelievable stuff. It's you know it's a thought it's a purpose built space, mm. so well thought out. Everyone's kind of sharing this big, large space, which allows people to create their own little space within it. <clears throat> and I think that 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 allowed for our it, it, for each person to be creative in their very own way. Oftentimes, when you're in a band, you kind of have to unite or go with one person's creative burst. Yeah. Whereas I think that because we each had our own space and time, everyone was able to like nourish each other's kind of creative vibe. And it, it it meant that I don't know it, it made the album just come out of us, and it made the album easy. It was the easiest album we've made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for you, Joe, was it a, a, a great experience for you being there? Because you said you wrote kind of half of the songs while you were in the studio there. Yeah, I did that with the the album before as well. Mm-hmm. I think the difference was I was I was happy. Or, and yeah, I was, I was in a healthy place. Yeah. Uh, I also had Kenny Beats, who works with rappers a lot. Um, so as a co-producer with Bowen here, um, he was probably, I think I benefited the most on a personal level from having Kenny there because he pushed me in a, like our personalities work very well together in a, in a working relationship, which is basically like zero patience um, and like, I would say negative patience. <laughs> <laughs> like we're both, Kenny and I are both very aggressive with each other. Yeah. Um, when, we're, when we're working. Afterwards, you know, it's very loving. <clears throat> and he's, I say he's patient. He's <clears throat> not. <clears throat> we're very aggressive when we work together. Um, but that's what I need. And that's what he needs. Um, well, actually, no, he doesn't need anything. He's a very, the reason why he's one of the best producers on earth is because he accommodates the person. He is not there with his ego to work in his anything into the record. He's there to allow the person that he's working with at that point in time to flourish. Mm. And he, you know, everything was like snaps and snap. And that's how, that's how I write on the spot. It's like freestyling, but it's like I've listened to the song 200 times. You know, I'm not just, I'm not going in like, well, what do I do? Yeah. I have like a palette ready and I have a, a song title, or like a subject. And then the, the melody in the room just flows. And that's how it works. And to have someone who's just there pushing you makes it very fluid. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a great experience. I loved it. Yeah. So Real World Studios in Bath, England. Was Peter Gabriel there? He popped in once, apparently. We didn't see him. Okay. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept thinking I saw him out in the run, but it turned out that was just a local guy who <laughs> styles himself as Peter Gabriel. <laughs> Probably gets a few free pints at yeah, the pub. Do you know like, what yeah, right? He's actually in a place called Box next to Bath, just mm. in case there's any um, Boxing's like listening. tribal violence going on between Box and Bath at the moment. We should clarify. So you guys are <laughs> kind of just returning to the States. I knew you were here back in fall of 2021, returning here uh, to the States to, to play at Coachella. Your first show was in San Diego. Did I hear that there was like a, a 10-year-old crowd surfer? Uh, yeah, Ian. Shout out to Ian. Um, yeah. There's a 10-year-old crowd surfer. There was an earthquake. Ah, it all 4. Went 6 on the Richter, baby. What? I've said yeah. that too many times now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was ironic. <laughs> um, you judgmental pricks. Um, yeah, Ian came out. It was Bunny's birthday. Uh, oh, no, Bunny just brought a bunny. Bunny bought a bunny. It was Jasmine's birthday. Jasmine. Jasmine's, Jasmine's birthday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 18. So do your fans just write you or do you pay attention to social media? Like oh, these how... are people just shouting at us from the front row. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 I, 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 Ian was sat on the barrier the whole time in front of His me. His dad was amazing. Yeah, right? yeah. Just keeping him safe, holding him up the whole time. It was, it was cool. Oh, that's so adorable. Really risky place to be if you if you ask me. If I, no, he, he, he was good. I mean, He's the taking stage... a leaf out of that 90s parenting, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the stage dive was incredible. He took a good run and, and landed it better than I've ever done. 
did a shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. Ten, well, ten. A lot of your fans have just grown up with you. Um, so I'm sure that with this new record of yours and, and you talking about uh, things that you've gone through with substance abuse mm-hmm. and such, have you been able to talk with your fans about that after shows? Have people come up to you and say, like, thank you so much for writing this? And I know I'm asking that in just a weird time in our lives where it's been quarantined, so you probably haven't had a lot of interaction, but... No, 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 it's not a weird question. We've been touring since November last year, um, so we've had plenty of time to interact with our fans. Um, yes mm-hmm. is, the, is the quick answer. I've had, you know, I think the, the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line, okay? Um, and I hope this comes across the right way. But I write my lyrics for me. Mm. I would have I would have died or I'd be in prison now if it wasn't for these guys. That's a fact. Dead, dead or in prison, 100%. Um, but my gratitude and my love is real. There's no virtue signaling and there's no sense of performance. Uh, like anyone that knows me knows I cannot perform. I'm not a liar. I can't act. Um, but I write the songs for me. Before I was in the band and be- when I was really in a dark place with addiction and when my mum was dying and before that when she wasn't dying but very ill, I was very lonely, very lonely. Mm. Um, and I used the music to not feel alone. And as my father taught me from a very young age, as an artist himself, that art is a language in which you can learn to be fluent if you learn your craft first, learn your skill, and let that become second nature in order to be as fluent as possible when you move forward, in order to get what you want from your audience. And that can be anything. And you know, as you can tell from the world of art, it can create any sort of emotion. For me, it's to feel like I'm part of something bigger than myself, but also, the real beauty and when you know you see me cry on stage is because i realize that i've created we have created a place where other people also feel like they're not alone that's the key that's that's what i that's how i survived loneliness and actually being alone are very two different things i think it's very hard in this world to be alone but loneliness is rife and I think music and art can bring people together, call it cliched, but sometimes they're right. And this one's true. And we just want to create a, a community of people that feel safe and loved. Yeah, I love that. Um, you're going to play us one more song. No. This one's a rocker. You got it. can't leave us hanging. Oh, Crowell. Yeah. Yeah, exclamation mark. I love that. Um, Thanks for having us. Yeah, this is Idols in our studio. This is Indie 1023.
It's Indie 1023 Idols in our studio. Crawl from the new record, Crawler. It's the band's fourth album. It's out now. Uh, you guys, uh, you're getting ready to go back to Coachella after, you know, you play here in Denver, at Mission Ballroom, you're going to go to Salt Lake City, then back to the desert. Yeah. How was first weekend of Coachella? It was stunning. Thank you for asking, Alicia. Yeah. It was great. It was really sunny. Lots of palm trees. Lots of VIPs, Alicia. Lots of them. Yeah. What about F O O D? What kind of food was Would there backstage? <laughs> <laughs> um, I hear they have pretty good like concessions back there. They do. Well, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's a swanky backstage. Catering allows you one plate. You got to get your thing scanned. Your retina checked, and then is that your retina? That's yeah. No, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got it right. right. I don't want to get the wrong hole. Um, yeah, your retina checked, and then they let you in to have a plate of, I think it was like these turkey, patty, cheesy, burger, breakfast buns, yes. which I'm not allowed to eat, because I'm an athlete, you know? Mm -hmm. So what did I have? I think I just had eggs and like a yogurt. Did you have lunch? The lunch was incredible. No, I didn't have lunch. <laughs> you missed out. Well, maybe this lunch. weekend. Yeah. For flips. It's just salads. It was, all, it was really good. Um, yeah, no, by that point, I was busy socialising. They, they had uh, an array, an array of iced teas, like oolong, rose, like all sorts of different, like, ma teas. I went in. It was great. These are the things we want to hear. Do you know and I, mean? I was there drinking Rock. pod coffee like a moron backstage with the chats. Yeah. Mm. I was cooling myself off with a nice Lapsang Souchon and oolong rose tea, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, it was it was magic. Um, Arcade Fire were really swift getting off stage. We had a great show. Um, uh, we had a great turnout. Um, I increased my followers on Instagram. <laughs> Shout out to the Bones. guys. <laughs> Namaste. Uh, Bones now an influencer, not influenza. Which Congratulations. You made a mistake of before. Yeah, you regretted that, didn't I you, buddy? I did, yeah. Um, yeah, Coachella. It was good. It was good. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one, you know, because like, well, it's not for the ego. It's like, because you know, you know, you're like a speck in the industry, but it is the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to other ones and it's kind of a bubble. Um, but it's, you know, you're next to like Harry Styles and like, who's sick? 
like amazing show but like you know there's there's a few other bands there like spiritualized were there which is a huge privilege to be able to say that we're on the same bill as them the chats who are amazing i'm on the sniffers there's loads like princess nokia which we had to do interviews through which was but i get to check out next weekend um baby keem loads of great artists you're just there you know you're part of it and you just got to embrace it it's it's tough it's a tougher for the rock crowd you know yeah. for, the, for the rock scene you know people don't care about that stuff on on that sort of level of music fandom but we love that challenge we like we're better as the underdog you know we don't want to be like you know complimented on a daily basis okay it does help but not all the time mm-hmm. so coachella was a was a good healthy kick in the in the balls i'm all about getting the iced teas backstage so let's get game on Mm. You great. You're gonna need to add that to your writer now. It, it's it's getting written in there currently. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today at our studio. Wish you best of luck getting back out on the road and you know weekend number two at Coachella. My name is Alicia Sweeney, joined by the band Idols. Thank you so much, Joe and Bowen, for chatting with me as well. This is Indie 1023. The Idols album Crawler is out now. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you very much. <laughs>